I am going to put my farmer hat on and uh, talk to you a little bit about our, what's been going on in my farm in Oregon and then also um, explain or talk about some of the challenges we're having because of climate change. So I farm with my husband, Ivan, and I had to put his picture up here because I need to shout him out because farming is a partnership and he is holding down the fort while I am able to be away. Our, the name of our farm is Shamanic Bridge Farm. It is on Kalapuya land, and if you're familiar with Oregon and the area that I live in, our farm is located on Thomas Creek, which is a beautiful creek that runs into uh, the South Santiam River. Here's just a little visual of um, where we are at in Oregon. We're about an hour and 30 minutes south of Portland, about 30 minutes outside of Salem, and we're on what's known as the wet side of the state, and I think that's a really important um, note for this presentation. So our farm is about 70 acres, and we have really, we've taken a conventionally farm farm. We've been on this land for about 10 years now, and we've been trying to um, improve it through perennial grasses. And so this is just some of our um, forage that we have, and we are grazing animals, and we really pride ourselves in trying to be animal well, high animal welfare centric and also soil centric in our practices. We're also experimenting cover crop geek um, with some really interesting cover crops like Phasalia, which are really good for pollinators. And so this is one of our front fields and we planted it in Phasalia and it brought all the bumbles to the yard. We graze about 40 steers uh, each year. Um, we do managed rotational grazing, which means we're moving the animals at a minimum of once a day, sometimes multiple times a day. We raise goats on pasture, pigs on pasture. And I have a, a lot of few little side enterprises. I'd have, um, a few hives and I do honey. I have a large market garden. I have a small raw milk dairy. These are two of my cows. That's Esther on the right, flour on the left. And then on, in 2020, we um, had food shortages in our community. So we opened up a farm stand where our community members can come and they can buy everything that we produce on the farm. Um, it's an honor system and it really got a lot of traction when, during COVID when people were having a hard time accessing food. Now I'm going to tell you about the year that changed everything. This was September 7th, 2020. If you could see this video, you'd see these sunflowers and they would be blowing like mad. We got easterly winds, it was like new, zero humidity and wind gusts were 80 to 90 miles per hour. There were uh, a couple of small wilderness fires up in the mountains and nobody was really worried about them, nothing was threatened, but when we had these 80 to 90 mile an hour winds, we had two wilderness fires that blew up and started running across our canyons and down toward our farm. Uh, over the course of the night, uh, the fires were running so fast that we were told at one point they were burning 100 acres per minute. This doesn't look like a slide, but this was the morning of September 8th, 2020, when I woke up. This was 9.30 in the morning, well after the sun should have been up, and it was pitch black. This was 10.30 in the morning. Um, the sky was this eerie red blood color, and there were charred um, leaves in our yard. This was 12 o'clock. Really, the, the color of the sky never changed. It was this ugly, eerie yellow. And um, you really couldn't go outside because the ashes were burning, you, burning your eyes. So I was using my swim goggles in order to protect my eyes. And we were trying to, we evacuated some animals, and then we were uh, trying to move our irrigation around others. I was also part of a crew that was going up into the mountains trying to help people get their livestock out. This was during the day, and it was just, the smoke was thick as pea soup. Um, and it was very difficult uh, for visibility and also just you know, getting scared animals out. So I wanna just stop and say, we were not prepared. We live on the, on the wet side of Oregon. Fires don't happen where we're at. And that all changed in September 2020. And just for about three weeks after, we had some of the worst air quality in the world. Um, we couldn't go outside without a respirator. Our poor animals and the poor, I, I kept thinking about the poor farm workers who are like out working in the fields and what they were experiencing. Um, but it was just, a, just horrible air quality. And we were so glad when the rains came back. It was so amazing. But they kept coming and they kept coming and they kept coming. And then in December of 2020, we had massive floods because of what they called an atmospheric river that was headed toward Oregon. Later in December 2020, we had aerial flooding uh, because of the water. And basically aerial flooding is when there's, the soil is so saturated, there's nowhere for it to go. So essentially you get like these river systems that are flowing across flatlands. And then when the water stopped, 
We got this incredible, beautiful ice storm in February of 2021. It was gorgeous, but it took down power lines, and we were without power for eight days. And if you can imagine having animals and having, you know, to rely on power for your pumps and everything else, that was really, it was devastating. And you can't really tell the magnitude of this ice storm, but basically this is one of our fence lines. That's my husband, Ivan, walking. Essentially, our entire fence line was taken out on 70 acres with uh, all of the down limbs. And then, so the ice storm left, and we thought we'd made it through the winter. June arrived, and June is the best time to be on the farm. It's beautiful, it's sunny, you can be outside. The animals are happy. We're happy, we're going swimming, we're not working that hard. And then, we got the heat dome. And so this was in uh, June of 2021. The only thing comedic about this was my weather app, which I had to share with you. But we basically had a week of 100 degree temperatures. Even at night, the temperatures didn't dip below 100 degrees, which is really hard on the animals. Um, the highest point was 116 degrees. And I watched the thermometer rise 20 degrees in an hour. And this is what it was like. Um, it was hard on us uh, as people trying to take care of animals. This was one of my horses who just uh, was, obviously you can see in his face, he was just miserable. And one of the most tragic parts was we have these little bird houses all around our property for bluebirds. And the little bluebirds, the babies, basically like died because they were trying to get out to get to fresh air. So there was an entire generation of bluebirds that was lost. What also happened, so this is in July, and normally we're on irrigated pastures, meaning we irrigate, we can keep our grass really green. And because we had such an awful June, it basically killed the grass. So we were watering and watering and watering, and the grass still wasn't coming back. Um, and you can see the picture up on the left. That was, we were part of this, and we still are in a, in a massive drought that really is affecting everyone. So this meant we had to start buying hay earlier in the year. And normally, we, would, we don't feed hay until late October, early November, and we were buying hay in July and August for our cattle. So if that wasn't enough that we went through, and it's been a tough, tough year, or that was a tough year, it continues, things continue to be tough as we adapt to climate change. But now we have another problem in my community. And you, know, you hear a lot of talk about climate refugees and like, people moving to get to you know, better climates or you know, losing their homes because of rising sea levels or all the other things. Well, corporations are also doing this. Um, now, in about a year ago, maybe a little over a year ago, we learned that there are uh, 13 million birds being proposed in a 10 mile radius of where I farm. And it's Foster Farms, is a California-based company which now is owned by Atlas Holdings, so we don't really know who owns it, um, is moving into Oregon because California is tightening up on their groundwater extraction. So Oregon is sort of the next um, place for attempting, I should say attempting, to be the next place for industrial chicken expansion. Um, we, we are fighting it, our community is fighting it. You know, we know that over the, even though we've experienced extreme weather, we know that over the next 10 years, the climate models, models show that really our groundwater is not gonna change. We're gonna have higher, hotter, drier, longer summers, but overall we're better off um, than some places. And so that makes it, us a very attractive place for these corporations as things are getting worse where they're at. So never thought that um, we would be in a situation to not only be, figuring out what to do, how to farm, keep farming, feed our communities because of climate. But now we're trying to figure out how we do this and fight back against these corporations who are coming in to, to literally mine the natural resources. And there's a whole host of issues uh, that will come and make it more difficult to farm in our community if these guys get in.